Went to Manchester. Difficult place to go, not least because every train from London has been booked up months in advance by United fans from Surrey, who spend every waking second complaining about how unfair everything is and how referees, greedy players, greedy agents, greedy banks and greedy owners are ruining the game. They have no idea how bad football can get. They've never had to watch Ben Thatcher, Paolo Tramazzani and Ramon Vega. Before we get on the train, Tim stocks up on Marks and Spencer's lager and speculates about the nocturnal activities of a passing Arsenal fan's mother. On the train, Tim drinks the lager and discovers that the door to the driver's cabin has been left open. Briefly consider restaging the plot to Under Siege 2, but decide not to on account of not wanting to be killed by Steven Seagal. Get bored and wonder what Kevin Nolan and Andy Carroll would look like if they'd been done up to look like the characters from Rising Damp. Luckily, there's a picture in the mirror to help clear that up. Tim keeps himself entertained by making his own green and gold scarf out of a label and bits of plastic bag. In Manchester, there are a lot of Greggs and a lot of queues. Queues for Halloween costumes, queues for shoes, queues for tanks full of fish that eat the dead skin off your feet. I mean, who in their right mind pays to stick their feet in a bucket full of fish? Who's going to be impressed? You're supposed to go to a party, take off your shoes and socks and go, do you remember all that dead skin I used to have around my feet? It's gone now. A fish ate it. Go on, have a feel. Get the tram to the stadium and walk straight into a massive protest against the owners. Tim sings a few Spurs songs, hides under their banner and asks this bloke what time Norwich are playing. Suddenly it all goes mental. Poisonous gas is being leaked, flares are being lit, and they're singing songs about killing people. We decide to leave. Outside the ground, Pudsey is charging two quid for a hug. Tim sneaks up behind him and gets one for free. Inside the ground, there's just enough time for a pie, a cheeky bet, and for us to wonder who the number nine is. Soldier, Times New, Polanski. In the stand, hit the best terrace heckle of the season. The bloke in front of me points at the United mascot and starts singing, Satan, Satan, which raises an interesting point. How can the anti-glazer protest take the moral high ground when the club they support markets itself to children with images of Azazel, Lucifer, Beelzebub, the master of puppets, the great deceiver, the lord of the underworld, the king of pop? The game kicks off. We dominate and look the most likely to score, but United get a free kick and suddenly it's 1-0. Finally, the Japanese tourists in the stand start to make some noise. The halftime show is rubbish, bunch of women in dresses waving ribbons and Oh my god, the pitch is on fire! What? Who? The stand is exploding! There are sparks raining down on the pitch and I'm convinced I'm back in Nam. Tim comes back from the toilet wanting to know why the whole stadium is covered in smoke. Don't really watch the second half because I'm busy suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. We don't get many chances, Robbie King gets substituted, but I would have been happy if he went off and no one replaced him. Five minutes to go, Nanny dives like Tom Daly being fired out of a cannon. Suddenly the whole stadium starts cheering, all hell breaks loose, the United players give the ref a wedgie, and a goal is given to Satan FC, which seems a bit much considering all they're asking for was a penalty. We leave and all the United fans tell us about the goal and why it was only fair because Nana should have had a penalty, which makes it sound as if they were the ones that got cheated. The tram back to Manchester is tiny and so crowded that by the time we get back to Piccadilly I'm technically bisexual. Get home and finally see the second goal on match of the day. Oh for f**k's sake you f**king piece of f**king art Michael Jackson look-alike. We're not going to take this lying down. We'll organise a protest. Thousands of people marching through the streets of Tottenham all saying no to dodgy referees. Briefly wonder whether this could be my Rosa Parks moment. Still, it's all swings and roundabouts in it.